Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we are going to be looking at one of the most powerful bikes in the stealth range. Now, stealth bikes are known for their super powered like electric bikes basically. They have pedals, they have big batteries, big motors, they're like supercharged electric e-bikes. What a lot of people don't know is they also make a dirt bike version of their bike, so no pedals with like the motocross style seat, pegs instead of um, pedals that rotate, so it really looks much more like a motorbike, and that is the H52. As you may know, stealth bikes are made in Australia. They're hand put together uh, with love and care by the Australians. They're really high quality, very well thought out machines. This bike, the sort of motocross version, dirt bike version, uh, comes in camo, comes in black as well. So you've got this like desert storm camo color and then that stealthy black um, if you wanna go totally under the radar. The main differences between this and the B52, their other flagship model with the pedals, is that this has pegs, so you can see down below, foot pegs rather than pedals, and also this motocross style seat, this swept seat, whereas the other bikes come with a more classic bicycle type saddle. So on the H52 model, we've got the 27 inch tires. So they're 27 by 2.8 inch, which is bigger than they used to be. We used to have the 24 at the back on these. Another difference is that the H52 now comes with the Schwab Eddy Current tires, which are made for powerful electric bikes. Now, when they actually produce their, their whole batches of these bikes, we don't know if this is gonna be the exact tire because it is gonna come down to what can be sourced. So it'll be the highest quality tire that they can source at the time. As we know with COVID and uh, other problems with shipping worldwide at the moment um, and manufacturers, not every component is always available. So let's hope it comes with these because these are really high quality tires. So moving in from the tires, you can see down below, well, I can see from my side, but we'll do a close up view in a second, you'll be able to see the brakes. These are upgraded on these new models as well. So these are the 2022 Stealth models. We've got massive discs on here, 250 mil by three mil discs, super, super thick and sturdy. They allow much more braking power when the brake's clamping on. Now, speaking about brakes, we've got the Minicross 65 hydraulic disc brakes. So these are like Minicross or like motorbike grade brakes. Huge cylinders up the top, really nice feel on the grips here. We've used these already on the F37 already, so we know how good they are. They are some really, really high performance brakes. And if you come and have a test ride on one of these or get the chance to ride one somewhere, with these brakes or another bike with these brakes on, you will know what I mean. Like as you go into a corner, it's really well balanced. They don't over skid. They apply with real force, but without completely locking everything up. So a really high quality brake there. Also, we've got the thick brake lines as well. So I've upgraded those. They're a really nice touch from Stealth there. Um, with a powerful bike, you need high quality brakes. Moving up from the wheel, we've got the suspension. So this is a fast ace, inverted double crown suspension again, like that motocross style or upside down suspension, people call it. Really plush, really comfortable, rebound adjustable. Looking forward to trying that out because um, it's a really high quality suspension. It's gonna give a smooth ride off-roading, we hope, and be able to take some of those big impacts when we go off the jumps later. So whilst we're here, obviously you can see we've got the Stealth logo at the front. Now you can get a Fender, um, they've made these now. So they look really cool actually, and we'll show you later. They come out here and they have a logo space here. So that will have the Stealth logo on in a green. But what they're bringing out next year is a light that will fit in that space. So you can remove that logo and fit the light there and that will connect into the bike and just uh, be another like cool feature for when you're riding in the dark, we'll have a really nice high powered light. There. That will be coming next year. So moving down the chassis, obviously we've got a huge battery in here, 30 amp battery, it's gonna be 84 volt. So massive battery for massive amount of power. Obviously the motor's drawing a lot of power from that and we still wanna get good range and good speed. This bike is gonna give you speeds of up to 50 mile an hour, it'll be restricted to uh, 150 Newton meters of torque from that 2600 watt motor, what would be 6, 000, over 6000 watt peak power on that motor uh, range wise you can get anything up to sort of 50 miles is what they're, they're um, proposing at around 30 miles an hour. Obviously that will go down the faster you go, the hills you're climbing, that kind of, kind of thing. But what we found with these bikes is you always get an hour of flat out. Like if you're really hacking it, you usually get about an hour. Obviously you'll get hours and hours if you're riding a bit more conservatively. So we talked about the battery and the range. 
To charge that battery, we've got a 10 amp fast charger that comes with the, these bikes, which is really powerful, but they're rated for that, so don't worry, it's not gonna damage your battery. And that will take about three hours to fully charge, which is amazing, really, for that battery size and power. No other products we've got can charge that that quickly, so Stealth have thought about that. They've obviously got a seriously powerful bike. They don't want people to be waiting around for you know days and days to recharge their battery to have some more fun. So they've put a super fast charger in there, um, so it's a three hour charge time from zero to 100, which is unbelievable. Stealth on all their bikes give a lifetime guarantee on the frame, which is amazing. Obviously it's pressed metal, um, the chassis of the bike, I should say, rather than the, sh than the frame. The whole chassis you get a lifetime guarantee on from Stealth. Really good company, backing their products. A lot of fakes around Stealth bikes uh, all around the world, calling themselves Stealth B52, Stealth Bombers, or whatever. But unless it's got that Stealth logo on and you check your VIN number on the front here on the display with Stealth themselves, that's the only way you can be sure if it's a genuine Stealth bike. Um, all electricals always get another year's warranty. They're very, very good with parts stealth. If anything does go wrong, they've always been excellent with us for supply and replacements uh, as quickly as they possibly can um, and making sure customers are kept really uh, happy and satisfied, which is again is another good sign of a top quality company. With the stealth bikes, you get the two keys with them. So you turn the key in the ignition, display comes on, you then have to put your pin code in, which is a great safety feature. Again, your VIN number will come up there as well. Can't start the bike without the pin code. You can set that yourself once you um, once you open up your bike for how often you want to put your pin code in, but it's a really good safety feature because they're quite hard to pick up and carry away these bikes. It's almost 60 kilos, battery motors and all. So um, it's a good feature that someone can't just jump on and ride off uh, on the bike, which you can with some other bikes. Great safety feature there. You can also get into the modes a bit and mess around for how you like the acceleration and things like that. There's quite a few things you can do. Um, and obviously you can check through the manual to see some of those more in-depth features, but the general feature of the display are like battery life, voltage, speed, that kind of thing, like the general things that you wanna, you wanna see all the time. Then we move down to the seat. As I've said before, the H52 has a totally different seat to the uh, bikes in the other range. They're bicycle seats. We've got this motocross style seat, really comfortable. I mean, even just pressing it here, you can feel there's so much padding and foam in there. Stretches back, so for all the different types of riding, when you're going steep hills up, down, jumps, there's gonna be a position for you on here. Moving down from the seat, I'm just gonna get up, move back over here, it's hard to point that far. You'll be able to see the rear suspension. So down here, we've got the DNM shock with the canister in here as well. Again, you've got 180 mil travel on this rear shock. It's obviously rebound adjustable as well. You can set that for what type of terrain you're riding. Also, you can set the um, sag for, depending on how much you weigh. These bikes take up to sort of 120 kilo riders, that type of thing. So the heavier the rider, obviously you're gonna have to stiffen up the suspension a bit so it doesn't bottom out when you're riding over that bumpy terrain. If you're a light rider, you can get away with a lot more travel um, when you're riding the bike, because when you sit on it, it's not gonna drop down quite so far. So we've checked out the suspension. Hopefully from here, you can see the pegs as well. So here you can see these, they fold in and out, obviously when you're trying to transport it or whatever, you can have them up and they go down. There's loads of grip on these. I wouldn't fancy hitting my shins on these. So I definitely recommend riding with motorcycle boots on because if you're riding with shoes, that is gonna hurt. Anyone, uh, any of you who've had that experience of raking your shin up, uh, a bike or a motocross peg uh, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I'm sure you've got a load of scars to prove it as well. And then we come back down the swing arms and get to the motor. As I've said, we've got a brushless motor here, crystalline, um, and it is 2,600 watt nominal power. But as I've said, that provides over 6,000 watts of peak power and 100, approx 150 newton meters of torque. So it's a pretty torquey bike. Like to get to 50 mile an hour as well off that, you're gonna be wheeling uh, with that kind of power. Talked about the brakes already. Same brakes are on the front or on the rear. We talked about the braided cable, the four, four piston mo uh, mini cross brakes. Same tires obviously on the back, same size wheels. That's something Stealth have changed. They used to have a larger front wheel, smaller back, but now they've increased the overall size of the bikes by um, making the wheels bigger. They said it just added to the comfort of the ride. That's the only reason they did that. Um, got a bit more traction on the ground rather than spinning away with the smaller wheel, uh, which is what they wanted. Some companies will want that like wheelie off the line, but they wanted to try and put the power down through the bike and get that forward momentum. Uh, so when you speak to the designers there, they'll uh, talk to you in detail about why they've changed certain parts of these bikes uh, for the better in their opinion. Um, 
that's pretty much all of there. We'll move up to the handlebars now. So we've got these extra wide, ergonomically designed handlebars here with the swept um, right and left, which is quite comfortable. I like that riding style myself where they sort of sweep back on you. We spoke a little bit about the brake levers here, but they're very comfortable, very sensitive. You just have a little bit of play to engage and then squeeze down. And like I said, they're so progressive. If you jam them on, they are gonna go tight, but it's not just gonna lock everything up and skid. It's a ve they're very, very well designed. Um, very nice for feel if you're a feel rider and you're trying to just have little bits of pressure applied on and off as you're going through technical terrain. Brilliant brakes for that. There's not a lot else on the handlebars. You've got the nice grips. Again, we've got the half grip throttle. Not everyone likes this, I like it, uh, but I'm not an absolute maniac on a bike. A lot of the purist motocross riders, they're gonna want that full grip throttle on there. And there are options to have that, so you don't have to have the half grip, but that's how it comes as standard. What I do like about what they've done, quite a bit is plug and play. You've actually got a regen brake on here as well, which I haven't shown on the left brake. So when you apply that brake, you can either get motor um, braking as well, it's like a regen brake, but it's also gonna regen the battery as well when you brake. It's a nice feature they've added. They used to have a button on their older models, but now you just apply the brake and that applies the regen. What I was just talking about with these pop in, pop out connectors. Now, what's so useful about these is what used to happen is everything was wired into the battery or down through the speed controller. Now, if something does break, you can just pop that out, try a new one. Okay, yep, yeah, fixed in seconds, rather than having to take the whole bike to pieces. What we haven't spoken about is the speed controller, which I just mentioned always down under here with stealth. Never any problems with them. I always thought it's quite a vulnerable position for the speed controller and they do make um, protectors now, metal protectors for them. And they've got great airflow to cool them down. I think that's one of the reasons they keep them down here. So there's loads of airs flying past, stopping them from overheating. All really well sealed. We've ridden these bikes in wet conditions. They don't come with a, like an actual IP rating, but we've never had any water problems with them. A Little bit of misting maybe in the display every now and again, uh, but that's easily fixable. Not saying they're waterproof, um, and I'm not sure Stealth would claim to be, but from what we've put them through, and that's very wet conditions, we've never had any problems with water. And things like these connectors will help that. They have an IP rating, this has an IP rating, the battery will have an IP rating, and the controller will have an IP rating as well. So the overall bike might not have passed an IP test or even been put forward for one, but the components will all be rated to be in uh, damp, wet conditions. So again, that's like peace of mind. It's a brilliant bike for, well, I can't say this is a brilliant bike because I haven't ridden it yet, but stealth bikes in general have been brilliant for their reliability, uh, ease of maintenance, and their waterproofing. So we hope they've continued with this model. I'm really looking forward to having a go. Unfortunately, I'm probably not a good enough rider to show off this bike as it should be shown. Um, so we're gonna put it to a professional, give it to a professional, see what they can do, um, and then get some feedback from them on the limits of the bike um, at the top end and also any negatives that they think about it, but I'm just really, really looking forward to seeing what they can do on this bike. We've made it out. We're here with the Stealth H52. We're gonna do a speed run. We're gonna take it through the fields. We're gonna properly test it off-road, see what it can do. Now, I'm not the most extreme rider in the world, as some of you probably know, so we do have someone. He's a man of many talents. He has taken things to post boxes. He's run up hills. He's taken mini scooters up hills. He's helped his friends learn to one wheel. He's done all sorts of stuff uh, under the guise of ride and glides, Swiss army knife. The man, the myth, the legend, Toby Webb. All right, yeah, ready to rock. And we're off. It's a bit slidey, so I'm gonna do my best. It's gonna take all of my immense riding skill. Whoa. To, uh, to put this through its paces because it is super gliding over this choppy bit here. You did all of that suspension, oh, it's really fighting for grip. But when it finds it, it is good. Proper punches you across country. So I'm just gonna wait for my little, my little drone buddy. Here he is. Go away from the trees. We don't wanna lose another drone in the trees. If it's all right. Oh, I say that, nearly lost it. Still quite slimy. This is where I start fighting for grip here and get proper Tokyo drift on. Drift on! Whee! Oh, 
Oh, my me. We're away. Oh, I'm having. Oh. <laughs> We're fighting her. She's fighting. Oh, God, blimey. <sighs> Please tell me you're getting some of this Tokyo drift action. <laughs> my butt is so muddy. It is, it is very, <laughs> very <laughs> slimy out here. I've now been told by the uh, filmographer that variety is what the viewer wants. And by variety, he means I'll stay over here and you ride through a quagmire. So that's what we're going to be doing, trying to ride through uh, basically what looks like the aftermath of the first day of the SOM uh, on this Stealth H52. So I don't think it's going to be fast, but it's going to be um, fun and muddy, definitely. But I mean, looking at the state of me already, I don't think it really matters. It is, oh, I'm getting a mud shower. Mud shower. Whoa. Stay in the middle here. Got more grip. Cuts, well, comparatively more grip. Not loads of grip, but more than on the sides. I'm really feathering the throttle here <laughs> and it's still sliding about it's so powerful. Whoa, that was a big one. Woo! Whoa, nearly lost it there as well. Whoa, that back wheel spinning, giving me a lovely mud shower. I am so muddy. But I don't think anything electric is going to get you cross country. <laughs> and with as big a smile on your face as one of these. I mean, it is brilliant. Even in these really slimy conditions, such good fun. So we've just done some wicked riding across the fields uh, with the drone, churning up some mud. So we're gonna take it into the woods now, try and find some little trails. It is very soggy, but we're gonna see, uh, see what it can do in here. I mean, I'm struggling to get up these hills here and this machine is designed for this kind of terrain. So uh, Luke's doing an incredible job on a, on a one wheel with a slick tire. Um, so yeah, shout out to him. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, I've ridden the F37, which is the H52's little baby brother. Um, the H52 is the top of the line stealth along with the B52. Uh, B52 and H52 are essentially the same, same power, and the B52 just has pedals, which gives you a little bit of extra range and kind of a, almost like a turbo boost when you're pedaling at the same time as gunning it. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely noticing uh, the increase in power on this. Brakes are really good. It's got those four piston uh, moto brakes, which are upgraded from the previous stealth models. Stop you on a dime. So yeah, now we're in, this is proper stealth territory up here and the sticks out in the woods so I'm just sort of looking about with my eagle eyes my trail spotter eyes on to try and see if I can find a little offshoot that we can really start hacking it on this and um, and see what it's capable of like I say I am a whoa Lou that was close whoa don't envy him so I've got the chest mount running now so hopefully you guys are getting a good kind of view from my point of view of the cockpit and all the controls and also the conditions that we're riding in. We're both fighting with, with the terrain at the moment. The level of grip is minimal. Um, so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm having to kind of really be picky with when I'm giving it the full beans, because obviously this is a powerful machine. Um, and Luke's on a one wheel with a slick tire. So obviously he's pretty much just aquaplaning all of the time. Um, but we'll do it for the tube. For the YouTube, you know, these are the things that we that we go through, the trials and tribulations of, uh, of video makers out in, in the sticks of West Sussex in a, on a soggy uh, January day. But we're still having fun, that's the main thing, so we need to uh, crack on. So obviously there's a few um, kind of e-bikes out there on the market. Uh, this would fit into the kind of extreme uh, sort of cross-country hacker mountain bike category, I guess. So these stealth bikes are obviously engineered and, and uh, handmade in Australia. So the build quality of these is absolutely incredible. Um, pretty much bulletproof. I mean, these conditions that we're riding it through today are probably on the, uh, 
on the edge of what you'd want to be riding uh, an electric bike in. Um, and again, it's performing pretty, you know, pretty flawlessly. Um, it's more a case of I'm having to be thoughtful, should I say, about when I'm using the full power of the motor just because the, the grip's just not there today. Um, I, you know, I'm going to do my best as a middle-aged, mediocre mountain bike rider to sort of try and put this through its paces, but I'm going to, you know, this is obviously a, a get out here for me. The, uh, the conditions are not the most favourable for uh, hacking it at full speed, but, you know, I'll do my best. Well, we're in performance mode now, so I'm just going to give it some means up this hill, see what we can do. Lion! What's that? That's 30 miles per hour. 35 and a half. Still pulling. Pretty choppy. Full beans. Woo! That's nearly 40 miles per hour at the edge of my bravery, I think. Woo! That felt fast. That felt really fast. So I've just hit it as hard as my cojones would allow me. Um, and I top it out at roughly about 40 miles per hour. Um, I mean, this has probably still got more in the tank, but as I've said previously, I am a middle-aged, me mediocre mountain bike rider. So that was about as far as I was willing to push it. Um, but still 40 miles per hour across really choppy terrain in super slimy conditions just shows how capable these bikes are um, at firing you across country at speed with a massive smile on your face. <laughs> So right in the, uh, the depths of the wood now, found a nice little uh, single track trail here. So I'm going to whack on the old Insta and, uh, and take you for a ride. I don't know where this goes and I've never ridden down this trail before, so it may end in disaster. Either way, here we go. Oh, that's so slimy. Finding new territory as we go. Whoa. So nice I'm to pedal. Whoa! Oh, I don't think even the stealth's gonna get over that bad boy. Ah, this is nothing the H52 can handle. They call me Toby McCaskill. No, I ain't getting up that. Oh. I am absolutely caked in mud. We've been riding for a while now. Uh, I'm going to try and get some kind of speed run down here. Again, it's really slimy and I've got, I've been riding a while, so I've got 27% battery left. So this probably isn't going to be the best representation of the performance of this. I think Stealth advertised somewhere between 45 miles an hour as a top speed on this. Uh, 45 to 50, so I'll see if I can get anywhere near that. Obviously, it's going to involve some bravery from me as well. So, uh, here we go. Full throttle. We're already at 25, 26. 35. Woo! Well, the last time I looked down there, we were 41 plus. Um, and I probably kept it on the beans for a little bit longer. So I'd recommend, I'd probably, probably got near 45 miles per hour there. I mean, it felt rapido. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that, was, that was fast. So yeah, I can say this bike goes definitely 41 miles per hour at least, even with a middle-aged mediocre mountain biker on it. What's up guys? So we've been out, whew, out in the woods for a good, probably hour or so, nearly two hours now. Uh, putting this thing through its paces, it's also been putting me through mine, as you can see by the state of my helmet and my clothes. Hang on, let me just give you, a, give you an idea of what we've been fighting today. Oh, that's actually not too bad, but yeah, it's been really slimy, but brilliant fun. Um, again, the, the H52 is like the F37, but more, bigger, better, more bomber. Um, rapid performance from that, you know, you've got 6.2 kilowatts of power coming out of the motor. Those really good uh, mini moto brakes that stop you sharpish. 
Um, the suspension's handled everything that I've thrown it, um, thrown it out here today. But as you can see, both me and the bike <laughs> need a bath. So uh, I think we're gonna call it a day, head back, have a cup of tea, have a good old wash. So as usual, thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, leave us a comment and a like and give us a subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And as usual, if you've got any ideas for videos you wanna see, we'd love to hear it. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.